Unexpected and unusual situations, including emergencies, are something we respond to every day in healthcare, from patient medical events to even problems with complex equipment. These events are usually managed with readily available resources and our normal procedures, but sometimes the events require additional coordination and response. The Incident Command System, or ICS, is the preferred method to manage any sized event and of any complexity. The Incident Command System's structure and procedures are used across all sectors, public and private, with an aim to prevent, protect against, and respond to emergencies and disasters. ICS has many components, and of most importance is the Incident Management Team, or IMT. An IMT is a group of specially trained clinical and support service leaders who have the expertise to manage emergencies. They assist an organization with its operations by ensuring safety, eliminating duplicative efforts, and providing logistical and administrative support. This work greatly reduces the impact of an emergency event. This video will provide you with an overview of the roles and responsibilities of leaders who serve as incident management team members. As a leader, you will need to quickly assess situations and determine what impacts the event may have on operations, staff, and the people we care for. Think to yourself, does this event have the potential to stress our resources? If so, you should notify other leaders. Hi, it's Sue Klein from the fourth floor. I think we just had a big power surge and we heard a large boom coming from the side of the building. Something major is going on. Is everyone okay? I have my team checking in on our patients and colleagues in the other departments. Good, uh, wait a minute. I think I have another call coming in from another area. I'll call you back when I have more information on the situation. Based on the situation, you may need to quickly share the information you have with multiple leaders. Consider cascading actionable information to your manager, administrator on call, and if applicable, executive leadership and emergency management. Mary Hall? Yes. So the emergency is affecting multiple areas and you keep getting calls about it? Let's activate the incident management team in order to get a better handle on the situation and call emergency management so they can help us convene a team. It's common practice to notify and activate an incident management team using an electronic emergency notification system that can reach team members simultaneously by phone. This is a message from Hartford Healthcare Emergency Management. An emergency has been reported. Incident management team members should report to the Emergency Operations Center immediately. Text message, mobile application, and even email. An emergency has been reported. Incident management team members should report to the Emergency Operations Center immediately. When you start to assemble a team, you should provide instructions on where to assemble and whether it's in person or through a virtual meeting room. As a team member, ensure your contact information is up to date in all systems to be certain you are notified. Working as an incident management team member certainly takes practice, but as an everyday leader, you are well suited for the role. You solve problems constantly. This event is just that much more complex. After you delegate your normal job duties to a trusted colleague, be sure to select the appropriate emergency operations plan and familiarize yourself with your role on the incident management team. The incident commander or leader will identify team roles, set overarching goals and objectives, determine meeting times, and approve all internal and external communications. Thank you all for coming in on such short notice. We believe that the entire building is being affected by an infrastructure emergency. I'm going to assign incident management team roles for each of you. The command staff assists the incident commander by ensuring safety, communicating with constituents both internally and externally, partnering with other agencies, and providing event-specific subject matter expertise. Other key positions include the general staff, 
the Operations Section Chief, leads tactical incident operations, including patient care and support services, what many of us do every day. The Planning Section Chief collects, evaluates, and shares up-to-date event information to prepare for the incident management team's regularly occurring briefings or huddles. The Logistics Section Chief provides facilities, services, resources, and information to support the response to the incident. For example, this includes medical supplies or even extra staff. The Finance Section Chief tracks expenditures and assists with any administrative functions. And finally, remember the Incident Command System is scalable, so additional positions may be assigned under each section. As the incident management team becomes established and has some accurate details about the event, it's key to inform leaders about the situation and if there are any immediate next steps. Use a department assessment process to identify common trends, problems, or needs. You can discuss these during the incident management team's incident action planning meeting or huddle. Can I see our public information officer and our planning section chief? I'd like to send a communication to all department leaders about the event and ask them to report back their department's current status. We really need to know if they need anything from us, okay? We'll get right on it. Great, thank you. Briefings or huddles are convened by the incident commander and conducted at regularly scheduled intervals to share the most up-to-date information, discuss goals, objectives, and any planned actions. Incident management team members are then provided with a brief opportunity to share information about the actions they've completed or may take in the future. Okay, everyone, we're gonna get started. I would like our planning section chief to lead this meeting by providing a situation summary. Based on reports from our clinical and support services teams, we believe the building is experiencing an infrastructure failure. We should plan for intermittent outages over the next few hours. We've queried our department leaders on their status and based on their responses, we should consider the following goals and objectives. Given all the information we've discussed during our briefing and huddle, we need to communicate our progress to our staff and patients. Can we send a message to everyone? We're finishing up the message right now. Can you review and approve it? Communicating effectively during an emergency is critical. If official information is not provided, rumor and speculation will quickly fill the organization. Timely and accurate information may mean the difference between life and death, but it also provides assurances that the response is underway. Effective messages help ensure safety, facilitate response, build cooperation, and instill confidence. Emergencies and disasters may last for several hours, while others may last days or even weeks. An incident management team has the responsibility to continually reevaluate the emergency and decide which steps in this process may need to be repeated. Continually assess the situation, work with your team to respond to the event, and constantly communicate to all stakeholders. Following these steps will greatly contribute to the success of any emergency response, making sure we keep the people we care for safe. <laughs>